Welcome back to the channel, everyone. This is Bill Martin, 74 years young. My name is Jeff Moore. I am the Northwoods Carver, and thanks for seeing what I okay. saw. Bill is uh, uh, going to tell us a little bit about himself and how he came to, you know, come to the Mojo Dojo for chainsaw carving lessons. Um, he is not currently a carver but he's come to uh, really explore it and he's here for five days. That's pretty good commitment. So he's got all of my attention for the next five days, as long as I'm away. All right, Bill. Well, I'm from Gainesville, Florida. I am a retired orthodontist and my entire life, I have always really looked at carvers and said, I would like to do that, but just never took the step. So I started doing a lot of research on who's the best. Jeff's name kept coming up, coming up. And then I had my list of the top guys in the United States. Then I made another list of who's willing to teach somebody that knows absolutely nothing. That list got real short. And then I talked to Jeff and he really, made me feel okay, that he wasn't gonna make fun of me and make jokes about me, and that he would really be patient and that he felt I could do this. Because of course, there's a lot of insecurity with that. So um, I'm here. I got on a plane, flew to Madison, drove over here, and I'm ready to learn something. Okay, well hopefully you, uh, well you brought your appetite, right? So that's good. Thank goodness. <laughs> Best of... pizza I've ever had in my life last night. <laughs> it was good, man. Uh, anyway, uh, so Bill is going to pick up uh, some tricks. But first, he's never even witnessed uh, a carver actually carving in person, which is like, to me, that's so foreign. Um, and I'm like, are you sure you want to do this, man? Are you? And he's like, yeah, I want to learn how to do it. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Today, I'm going to just, or today and probably tomorrow, I'm just going to carve in front of him. And then he can still back out if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive him to the airport myself. I don't care. No, I I, I just want to do it so the he food's can... too good. I'm not leaving. Yeah, I'm right. No, I mean, Stay you know, the carving may not be, but the food's too good. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to run, I'm going to run a breakdown of my equipment and what I would, as I need it, uh, I'm just gonna grab it and then describe what it is, what it's for, how I use it, and and then it'll be a couple days of that, and then we're gonna go in the shop and then we're gonna break down how to maintenance your bar and chain. How to, you know, ma maintenance the saws, the different ones, because they're all a little bit different. They're all basically the same, but they do have little differences. And, uh, but as far as the carving equipment, it needs to be kept. Um, and then we're not going to go into lamination. We're not going to do any of that. This is just a basic, you know, we're going to do some, what I call the ninja boards. Um, it's basically techniques using uh, battery saws that is very finite. And just, it's all about balance and breathing and, and control or the lack of it. And uh, so we're just gonna go through some of that. And then hopefully, hopefully by the end, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a carving together and uh, get him on his way with a list of tools uh, and all that stuff so that he can take it home. And then he's gonna have to contact me again, I'm sure at some point. Um, and then we'll go from there. So stick around and let's see what we can solve. Where do I begin? Bill is wonderful. Bill is uh, a world traveler. You know, I just need to get that out of the way. He's he's climbed every single highest mountain on every up in every country in the world. Good gravy. That man has my respect. Um, he's very soft-spoken, mild-mannered. He likes to have fun. He doesn't take himself seriously at all. And uh, he's a heck of a nice guy. I just love to spend time with him. He can come back anytime. Hear that, Bill? So anyway, what we've decided to do is just basically, you know, 
I'm just letting him soak whatever this is in. I'm trying my best to utilize the light and the shadow in the room so that we can, you know, so I can show him what exactly I'm going to be asking him to kind of look out for. And that's pretty much it. Um, he's very, uh, very inquisitive and like, you know, 74 years old and still has that insane hunger or appetite for learning new exciting things. I mean, to me, getting in a plane and flying out here is just nuts. Um, I mean, at, at 74 years old, I, I, I was asking him, uh, I asked him earlier about, you know, what do you do out there for fun? And he said, I go, do you golf? I mean, do you have people you hang out with? And he's just like, well, not really. He goes, um, I don't really, you know, I said, not, you don't want to knock around on the golf course? You don't even that? And he's like, nah, he goes, he goes, I hate to say it, but I don't like hanging out with old people. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Cause he's got more energy. He's, he's not like, he is like a young man. He really is still at this, at 74. Whew. So getting into the carving aspect again, uh, Bill, um, was there, uh, you know, in the behind me, I don't know, you probably won't see him, but, uh, oh, there he is. Yeah. So he was behind me and, uh, uh, I'm just kind of doing threatening, putting in claws and paws so you can see how that happens. And then how I sketch things out. Basically it's a very, uh, it, for me, it's, it's no big deal. Like, cause I do these stupid things all the time. And for Bill though, however, it was, you know, he was just sitting there like with his eyes bugged and, you know, hilariously said, you know, this is what I expected. <laughs> you know, he expected to come in and start carving six foot bears right off. And I think he was joking, hopefully, when he said that. So this is the portion um, where we came it back in. We'd spent like a couple days dinking around on the bear, talking about, you know, different scenarios. Um, what to look out for and we're just right now we're doing I do a class on dressing bars how to inspect them and basically I do one and then I let I let I do one side and then I let him do the other side and just kind of help him out through that whole process um, I use a uh, a little scotch bright wheel I guess and uh, he's got his bar all dressed up and now we're just gonna be doing some exercises um, as far as uh, how to stand how you know because he is does he's never done this so I it was like going back to basics you know he already knew which end was pointy and which one was sharp so I didn't have to you know basically uh, I didn't have to reinvent the wheel with him but however you know it's all about control and I do special little things with my students. A lot of this won't be videotaped, but uh, some of it will, just so everybody has a grasp of uh, what I do for um, my students. So basically, uh, people, you know, like if you're if you're just coming in to do a class, you need to pay attention to. Uh, well, I'm I'm going to uh, help you pay attention to things you never even thought about. Like, how do you stand when you're cutting? How do you, where's your saw placement? Where's your, you know, uh, how are, I mean, there's so many things. To, it's like a fine dance, right? Um, and you just have to like, you gotta watch your breathing. You gotta do all this stuff. And here I'm explaining how your, between your elbow and the tip of your saw, there is a, a massive angle and it changes with the different length bars uh, as far as direction um, so as you can see I'm kind of doing that how far the back of that bar can go up for that little bit to go up or down in the front so you gotta really if the longer the bar the higher you have to you know angle yourself to get the smaller details so there, I'm just kinda giving him an example of him watching my elbow to have correct 
the correct form and just to keep your your postures right and uh, it's all about breathing and pivoting and it, it's it, there's a lot and that's all we did um, for like a whole day is just breathe and pivot All right, so we're back here with Bill Martin from Florida, from Gainesville, and we're just gonna get a couple of uh, little Q and A thing going on with him, and uh, just kind of see how we how we fared during the five day ordeal that was the Carver's Cambium workshops. So, Bill, <laughs> what did you think, bud? I mean, enough there. <laughs> He's so funny, everyone. Oh, I had a fantastic time, I tell you. Uh, I have learned so much that smoke's coming out of my ears. Oh, good. I thought I, I smelled something. I wasn't sure if that was you or not. Yeah, yeah. That this, was you. This was great. This was great. <laughs> I, you know, I come from a field. I'm a retired orthodox, and I always wondered if there was an artistic side to me. And, you know, I think I'm getting, beginning, Jeff helping me believe that there might be. There might be. Yeah, yeah, I think there is, I think there is. Um, so this, this is great, this is, was totally out of my realm of experience and um, something that I feel has answered a lot of questions for me, plus a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, I, we, me and uh, myself and Penn, uh, we had fun every day. He comes with a great attitude, so, uh, what was really interesting is, was I'm thinking to myself, this guy has never carved in his life. Why in the heck is he driving or flying across the country to come here and try something for the first time and then like be both feet in committed for a week? That's not normal. That's not normal, Bill. Well, my dad always told me you never want to be accused of being normal. Oh, well, there and you go. I, I've really made him proud on that, that one, Jeff, I tell yeah. you. Well. Well, but the nice thing about me was that I could come in totally as a beginner. And that's true. That's my true. mind wasn't clouded up with, I already know this, I know that. And empty cup, yeah. Just an empty cup. And so that put me, I think, at a great advantage over somebody who maybe has done a fair amount. Right. Plus, I always have the philosophy, if you want to learn something, you find the best person out there to teach you. And not to get Jeff's head in. No, head it's head the, the I most mean, available you know, I, one. I, I tell you, but, <laughs> but you know, I, I do my homework. And, uh, you know, I think that I want, you know, I'm retired. I got a limited amount of time to learn something. I want to learn it as fast as I can. So I want a good teacher that is going right. to take me from A to B a lot faster than maybe 30 years ago. I would mess around for three years and then yeah. try to, so this worked out great. Yeah, I think there's different types of people out there, you know, and this class really isn't for everybody. I mean, normally I don't do boot camp style, but I think the story with Bill is different uh, because uh, you know, this is a this is a it really is as in depth as it, it gets, and it's it, it's got a lot to do. I should say more to do with uh, uh, the philosophies involved, the philosophical aspect of where you're going, what you're going to do. I mean, we go through all that stuff, and then we do you know how to hold your mouth right and how to move your hips and all that stuff, and. Uh, so it's easier to start, it's better to learn than to relearn. I always say it's, it takes a lot less uh, time to learn than it does to relearn something because you already wait, you know, spent all that time trying to learn something that wasn't going to help you in the first place. But if you, you know, like Bill, he came fresh. And I was, because he did that, I was able to literally reverse the curriculum that I would normally have. Uh, so for the first day, or two days. Yeah. He just watched. He just watched me carve a bear, a nice bear, right? So, and he got to meet, he got to see the interaction I have with my customers. Somebody just called out of the blue while I was carving the bear and said, hey, do you have a bear? And I was like, well, 
Yeah, I do. You know, so uh, he came over, they came over, and they bought the bear at sight unseen, basically. He's like, we're coming over, and, you know, almost like we'll take it type thing. He saw the bear. I let them sit and watch, and Bill was sitting and watching with them as I carved. You know, they wondered how uh, I was going to create this bear sitting and where the body parts were going to be. And I said, well, just have a seat. And went through the whole thing. And uh, so he saw that, how Pam and I deal with customers and uh, actually more than one person. Stop, stop. Yeah. Uh, it was cool. And uh, so we made a sale. And uh, I mean, it was, it was a fun. And so he got to see all that. Not that Bill is going to go into a uh, into a business, <laughs> you know, <laughs> selling not. selling carvings in Florida. So I think he wants to uh, use the uh, the smaller saws, you know, do you know little stuff, you know, boards, and maybe some reliefs, and maybe some like you say, maybe some uh, what do they call them things? Otters. Yeah. Yeah, we got otters out there. We got plenty of otters. You could do sea creatures, right? Yeah, gators. Not so. Gators are. We got gators and otters and frogs and ducks and so nothing huge. I have no intention of doing anything. No. Huge. So he's not going to need you know a five hundred eye. He's not going to learn. I, I didn't teach him really anything with the gas saws. He never. He never even ran a gas saw. Uh, he's seventy four, and. He's had a pretty amazing life, a very physically demanding life. So I didn't want to like give him, I mean, strong and everything at his age for sure, but I, you know, the joints can't take like the, the gas powered beating from a carving, from carving every day. Uh, but for these little guys, what do we have, Bill? We have, uh, these, are, these are the two tools that he used mostly. Um, I think we did a little, I think we used the MSA 200 a little bit with the Samurai, I think it was the 10 inch. Or not Samurai, it's Samura. Um, so what we have here is he was using the steel MSA 140C with the 9 inch uh, Samurai Legend. And he basically learned how to use this saw. Uh, body mechanics, breathe, like there's so much going into it if you've never done it, and uh, I just kind of we just kind of broke it down, and uh, so he could wrap his head around. You know, he's been in martial arts in his past, you know, and tai chi and stuff. So this is not too far removed from that. Um, and this is the MSA 120 with the six inch Samurai Legend, which is an awesome setup. And uh, those are the two we used. Uh, so what's your take on the little guys, the little saws? I think they're fantastic. And for what I am interested in is I am interested in smaller pieces with detail. And so not the huge bears and that type of thing, because I'm not going to be horsing around huge logs and everything. <laughs> I mean, it's not happening. Yeah. But Coming from a dental background, mm. I like detail. And the part that was really phenomenal, I think one of the biggest, biggest learnings I got out of this was body mechanics. Oh. I mean, I've watched so many YouTubes on carving and you know, I really don't think I've seen that. I think mm. it's just hip tip. But Jeff was able to really teach me the body mechanics that really made it so much easier than doing this yeah, type of stuff so, all the right. time. So uh, that was a big like, yay, I can do. I'm a strong guy. I'm in very, very excellent good. physical shape. But still, um, you know, I think <laughs> it'll it'll beat you up. It'll beat you up. Yeah. So um, when it comes to like, like I say, my my class has a lot to do with the philosophical side. Uh, also, body mechanics, it's its incredibly important. And there's a lot of great carvers out there, and they just do it instinctively because once you carve long enough, you just you find yourself knowing where to put your foot, as because you know where you're going subliminally. You're just kind of like, oh, I know I'm going over here. I'm going to do this. And you know when to lock up and when to move and, you know, 
fun to bend your legs a little, whatever the case might be. And uh, so with with Bill, never ran, I mean, he's cut firewood and stuff and cut trees down, but he never, you know, this is something that is foreign. So I had to try to bring a couple of different uh, ways, because I know he's done Tai Chi, and that's all about, you know, shifting weight, and, and basically, this is what we're doing. Uh, we did that. And you have to do something a little bit different for the longer bar as opposed to the shorter bar, but we'll get into that potentially later. Or you might even see it happen on the video. It's, I, I'm not sure how much we got of this, but hopefully there's some cool stuff on there. Anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm like talking to Bill, we're having lunch. And uh, <laughs> we were, I'm like, you know, eating my whatever, I don't even know what we were eating. And he's like, well, you know, uh, he goes, I had this really interesting experience uh, when we were climbing um, Mount Everest. And I was like, oh, shut up. Come on, Bill, give me a break. He's like, and I just stopped it. I did like, I, I all right, and then I think the subject changed and I was like, I gotta get back. To, I'm gonna come back to this one. So uh, eventually the following day, I mean, we got a lot of time to know each other. We went driving around and we sh I showed him the sights and we went out to dinner and a couple of spots, a blast, right? So we're talking, we're getting to know each other. And then he tells me about his past uh, life before he was uh, orthodontist, before he went to school and had to go that whole route. Uh, like I was like, what? So you're gonna find this very interesting. And I, I know I did, because you look at him, you're like, orthodontist. <laughs> orthodontist, totally. Maybe he does a little side fishing in the pond next door. I, I don't know, but this, what, what he was telling me was just like, very, like, it just goes to show you, you never know who you're talking to. You never know what their past has been, what their experiences are. And, um, and no matter what you think you've done, there's always somebody out there that's just done crazier stuff. No matter how crazy it is, no matter how crazy, no matter how weird it was or whatever, there's always somebody that got abducted by a spaceship or whatever, you know, and they're just like, oh yeah, I got the proof. And they got pictures, you know, that's kind of what happened here. So, Bill did not get abducted by aliens, but he kind of <laughs> acts like it sometimes. So, Bill, let the people know, I kind of, just like an overall, something to the effect of, I think you put it in a nutshell by saying how you did these specific things across the world. And go. Huh. Just, I have, my background's been in climbing and outdoor um, guiding. Mountains. Yeah. Mountains. Yeah. And I worked as a climbing guide and then for National Outdoor Leadership School, and then for a guide service out in Washington State. And in the process of all of this, have traveled to every continent in the world, um, climbed the highest mountain on every one, except Everest. I didn't get to the top of it, but I got close. How close? 2,000 feet from the top. And, but that's like a world away. It is. Um, but we had a very educational experience there <laughs> for three months. <laughs> so, at least I can laugh about it. Um, but that was my life. And I have also done a lot in the Arctic. I led uh, an expedition to the North Pole in 1999 where we drove dog sleds and skied. We were the last expedition of the millennia to reach the pole on foot. So, this the outdoor world has been my world. And then some events happened along the way, and I decided I had to get a real job. And so that's when I went back to school and ended up being a dentist and an orthodontist. But still through all that, continued to climb. And so <clears throat> I've been very, very fortunate, one that I'm still alive, um, I have two hip replacements, two back surgeries. <laughs> it's not without cost, but... So he's here, he's here, he flew across the, the country to be here. 12, so he has had two hip replacements, or, or hips or knees? Hips. Hip replacements in the last 12 months. 
and he's here doing this stuff with me. So I'm wondering when I'm going to get my full-time job, my regular job. When do I quit all this nonsense and just get a job like? Hopefully never. Hopefully uh, never. Yeah. No. Maybe yeah, when I grow I, up. Yeah. I think I think the whole thing for me is life's an adventure, and this is an adventure. Getting on a plane, coming out to see somebody I knew, I knew some about because I've watched your videos, sure, talked to you and stuff. But to try something totally foreign to me, yeah, and to just trust the process, and that's it's been an amazing process. I mean, I'm, oh you know, man, one of the best five days I've spent in years. Well, same here. We have students, and they're all wonderful. Like all the people that come through this door. They're they're amazing. Last the last guy we had come through was Andrew Mallon, and he's he, he. I just love Andrew. My wife loves Andrew. We got along so well, and uh, we have a lot in common. And uh, and then right after Andrew comes uh, Bill, and so they're so they're they're all amazing, but they're all amazing in different ways. And you know when you live long enough, as Bill has, he's seventy four. You, you, you acquire, or I guess you accrue a bunch of cool stories if you remember, you know. He's got a good memory, thankfully. If you survive. If you survive, if you live. <laughs> so if you live through five days here, you're doing good. But I mean, we've had people stay here for a lot longer. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the guy that's got the record here is uh, Des Rothenbuehler from Alaska. He was here for a month and a half. And... Uh, it, it was just like, it's so fun watching people pick up these tricks and uh, learning, you know, how to see, you know, re-see things. That's kind of what we were oh, yeah. going through uh, shadow and light. And basically carving is a manipulation of light on a surface, much like charcoal or pen and ink, but it's, you know, it's three dimensional. So it's just a matter of wrapping your head around that. And then there's, of course, all your body mechanics and learning all the ins and outs of the saws and how to sharpen and how to maintain and how to dress bars and how to and so Bill had uh, to do all that in five days well and then too you taught me what the next steps are yeah that's, and the that's big true. one is truly uh, that I'm gonna go home and find a good teacher to work with drawing to work yes. with shadows and lines and things like yep. that. I mean, because we're talking mastery here, not, mm. you know. That's what you're know. talking, Bill. Most guys just want to carve stuff. Yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> Bill wants to become the master. He wants to climb. That'll never happen. He wants either. to climb Everest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the bunny hill, Bill. This is the bunny hill. This is, yeah. this is but you got to start this, somewhere. This is the walkway to the bunny hill right here. And then you got to start somewhere. And like for me, uh, I like, I like, I was telling Bill early, earlier, I take what I do very seriously, but I don't take myself seriously whatsoever. So, and I like to poke fun at it, but in reality, it's my life. And so I can take all of my uh, misfortunes and all of the things I've uh, acquired and, and accrued over the years as far as, you know, lessons and things like that and try to, you know, relate to somebody who's got pretty much the same kind of deal but in a different world like in far you know for a lot more years you know so this is my 30 gonna be 34th year soon and that's all I've done I've traveled around a little bit you know um, but it's not the same you know he's traveled I mean that was his deal he, he went all over the world you know then where did you start up you started off you started off climbing in France or something, didn't you? Or, yeah, uh, Switzerland. Yeah, why not? And good place to start. And you know, the, the thing is interesting. <clears throat> and what, what really just came to my mind good is that baby. when it's just like in climbing, you will get up to the top. You look up and you see. You say, "Okay, I got to get to the top of that." And so you get up to the top. And then you look out, and then there's this, and this, and this, and this. So you go, oh God, I'm not even, you know, I, I gotta do, and that's that's really how what you opened up my mind oh, to. I see. Okay. You got me to the top of that first 
hill and now I see, okay, I got to get a perspective on shadow drawing this and that. Right. I got to do, you know, I want to do this. I want to do this. So to try to put together that circle right. so that circle can connect and that's, I, I think that's the part that Jeff brings to this is this outlook of a master that looks at the, you know, instead of this and this, his is a circle and it all connects yeah, and it's all it up and grow. There's levels to this folks and uh, they somehow, uh, you, you can't ignore them. You know, you can, you can be at a level and not even realize it until someone opens your eyes to it. And then you might be not as far along as you thought you were, or you might be further along than the guy showing you what's going on. So you, you I never, I never underestimate anybody that walks through this door. Uh, and uh, so by doing so, you just get, you know, you could get sit on your, your behind and just have to listen for a while because um, it gives you a better perspective of like Bill's experiences that he's told me about anyway are, you know, like you wouldn't, you don't hear this stuff. This sounds like National Geographic or something. And then you're just like, well, what are you doing here? <laughs> National Geographic doesn't come to Wisconsin much, you know, especially the, you know, this place, you know, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a field. So, but he's here and he's learning and it's been a delight. Hopefully, uh, we'll hear back from him because I want to do some, I want to do some stuff on my channel where we do maybe a, like a Zoom video or something and we talk about some of the crazy stuff that he's gone through in his life. And, uh, you know, in his climbing trips and the thing to go into the, uh, uh, the Ar is it Arctic or An Antarctic? Yeah, Antarctic, Antarctic. Antarctic <clears throat> on sled dogs and like all the stuff that he ran into and, you know, all the different challenges he's had to face. And also, so what's really cool too is that, like, say if he was just beginning, he would be awesome because he's got a great he's got a great personality, but he said he's really good at raising money <laughs> for expeditions. He had to raise money for expeditions. He's not a billionaire, so they the, the I guess the group that you were with they relied on funds from corporations and stuff. So he had to go and ding dong, you know, do the thing, do the spiel. So. Be a salesman. Be a salesman. We're all salesmen. We're all salesmen. Some of us just ain't very good at it. But anyway, so this has been uh, Bill Martin from Gainesville, Florida, the the mountaineering chainsaw carver, <laughs> <laughs> uh, extraordinaire, and then of course me. So if, don't forget to like and subscribe. Smash that <laughs> notification bell. And uh, thanks for seeing what I saw. All right, that's good. I think that's a keeper. I put together a list of quotes for my new friend Bill. I hope you enjoy this, Bill. In the mountains, there are only two grades. You can either do it or you can't. Rusty Bailey. Over every mountain, there is a path, although it may not be seen from the valley. In the mountains, you are sometimes invited sometimes tolerated, and sometimes told to go home. Fred Becky. Those who travel to the mountaintops are half in love with themselves and half in love with oblivion. Robert McFarlane. Never measure the height of a mountain until you reach the top. Then you will see how low it was. Dan Hammerskold. The greatest gift of life on the mountain is time. Time to think or not think. Read or not read. Scribble or not scribble. To sleep and cook and walk in the woods is to sit and stare at the shapes of the hills. Philip Connors. Accidents on big mountains happen when people's ambitions cloud their good judgment. Good climbing is about climbing with heart and with instinct, not ambition and pride. Bear Grylls.
Well, here we are back out of the mountains and in the good old state of Wisconsin, uh, making a toasted s'more out of a big bear. Well, he's not a very big bear. He's, he's might be a six footer if he stood up. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to stand up though. If he ain't standing up with fire on his keister, he ain't going to ever stand up. So here I am. After I torch him, I always take this little tool called the Osborne brush and give it a good brushing. Uh, once that's done, we address the cracks. My wife is addressing the cracks right now, uh, doing wedges. And there's also some pretty interesting um, things that are coming up, coming up as far as how I deal with this situation after we get the uh, the shimming all done. Has to, all the shims have to come off and then I have to re-sculpt where the shims were and then kind of make it look like they weren't there. Looks like a porcupine. Yeah, so there is a job I'm working on in the back. You, I'm sure you probably saw it. Boy, I don't know. Thanks for sticking around this far, everyone. This is, uh, I think I brought this up earlier in the video. It is a wood hardener from Minwax. So a lot of times when you're carving on these trees, uh, especially found wood or, you know, just wood you can get for free or sometimes you make a mistake and, I mean, hopefully you don't. And then you have like this punky wood on the outside. And it's not completely letting go or anything. It's, you could just tell it's not up to standard. So um, it's not as good and hard as some of the interior wood. So what I like to do uh, is use this. It just pours on and it, it just absorbs instantly and turns into concrete dang near. It's so, it's, such a, it's a wonderful product. Uh, I ain't getting paid by these guys, which I was the night. These are 20 bucks a can roughly, depending on where you're at. Uh, now to address the elephant in the room. What is going on with this? What is going on with this? Well, my wife and I um, fix cracks in carvings, our, our carvings, and actually I get other people's carvings in here sometimes to get repaired as well. So basically what we do is we just create our own shims on the jet, uh, I have a jet, bandsaw and we'll just get like a piece of scrap let's come on over here we'll get this we'll get something like this right here right and then we'll throw it uh you know we'll run it through the bandsaw and we'll just make a ton of shims at once like one block like that can make oh. hundreds of shims oh, yeah. it's crazy and then you cut those into, into quarters or thirds, and then you have even more. It's, it's nuts how many shims you can get. So like in an hour, I can make enough shims to last us half a year or more. So uh, basically that's all this is. We made all these. Um, so what we've done is we just basically take uh, a piece of, Like this is an old, this is a feather from an old project I had going on. And what we'll do is we'll salvage these. My wife will sand the ends into a wedge and custom fit them into the uh, into the cracks. And you know we just have to be selective because we you can't go too crazy because if by if you're if you go a little too aggressive uh, and you don't have enough angle on these wedges when you pound them in, it'll actually make the crack worse. You're gonna put some pressure on it. So you just wanna tap them in lightly with some glue. And honestly, it's gonna probably open up again. I'm not saying that this is the end all, be all, but uh, cause this wood is ever flexing, ever flexing, ever changing, ever expanding the track. Even once it's sealed. So will we have it back eventually? Probably depends on how picky the people are. Um, you know, if they don't mind a crack, then we're good. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just tell people to just spray some black spray paint in the crack just so it's not so obvious. Uh, Cause this will be a black bear with 
you know, so if it does split, it's gonna have a blonde split in the middle there. So yeah, so this is how we this is how we do. And the next bit of action will be me taking my saw, trimming all these off, and then re-sculpting the areas that we did this to. And then we'll paint it. We'll dry brush it. First we gotta put the black paint on, then we're gonna paint it, dry brush it, then we're gonna drag it back out here and we're gonna clean the base up once we get it all painted. But right now, I mean, we could tape it off and do all that, but it's not sanded or anything yet, so that's what we're gonna do. I think we're just gonna clean it all up with the saw once it's all done. So we have a nice contrasting, you know, paint section, you know, as opposed to the sanded blonde pine section. So yeah, let's pitter patter. Get in. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up, it's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror, if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find anything all it takes is some time and some clarity to find your identity it's mind over everything well it's that time it's time to paint um in case you didn't know i do the dry brush painting method on just about everything i do it just seems to accent what I do yeah, better than any other type of style, I guess, that I've tried. Uh, I've tried a lot of them over the last 34 years or so. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this here brush. Never forget to put your glasses on, if you wear glasses. Cause I can't see without them. Maybe I can see with them. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna fan this Well, I have to do this for all the people that haven't seen me paint or do anything if they've never done this or seen this before. So this is, like I've said, dry brush technique. This uh, is a very interesting technique that I picked up a while back and I just, I just, I'm attached to it now. It really does accent my pieces better than, you know, any other ones I've tried, like I said, and uh, it, it doesn't take long. You know, I'm not trying to set world records here with, you know, speed, but at the same time, I, I can get these done very quickly. It's basically at one color, um, and uh, and then I just do the eyes pretty much. Just you know, everything's up in the air. That yellow cart comes in really handy. I mean, you could put a bear or whatever. That thing will lift a lot. I have ten foot ceilings in my shop, so I mean, I could put. I could keep things in the strike zone and it is it just makes my life wonderful uh, at least the work part of it <laughs> um, I saved my back it's 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 just a really really good tool to have in your shop if you have a flat floor even if you don't even if you have a dirt floor if you can get one of them things in there it's you know just put it on a piece of plywood or something and just walk your stuff over and that could be your carving area but uh for sure definitely if you're in the hunt for something like this man i highly recommend it i think this one was like 400 bucks uh and then the other two i have are like 250 and three for 300 or 350 and you can buy them they're old and they work great still for what we do and we're just finishing up. The next step, however, is going to be taking the the bear back out. And as you can see along around the feet, there's overspray and all that. So that's got to get all dealt with. And I usually use a saw for that, just so you know. And we're just putting in some eyes. 
like I like to do just to give it a little bit of uh, expression and you know I just keep playing with it until I like it um, I, I do them different ways but I usually like to have the bear looking in, in a direction instead of just straight forward um, especially if it's going to be to the left of a door to the right of a door I keep that in mind and sometimes I'll have them look slightly upward like almost like a coy look but this is this is kind of my jam and this is the very end of my my painting uh, technique that I do this is just giving some life to the bear I know bears don't have white uh, white parts in their eyes they're bit, almost black and then they have this like like reddish brown but uh, this is a wood carving I'm not I don't really care <laughs> there we go see with that light on it just kills it kills all the color so here we are just like I said I'm getting up in there and cleaning all that up so that my wife can come in there with some uh, the sander and sand it all down and put the stain on it and then that will be a wrap look at her go yep uh, she's just using my Makita soft sander and she does she does a lot of that um, kind of stuff with that and uh, basically it's my little finger sander to get up there and sand that and here she comes with the stain once this is all done uh, that's it heck yeah man we got uh, we got this project pretty much ready to rumble and I think the final thing is just to blow it off the, all the dust and send it down the road well he's kind of dusty yeah he's a good looking fella he's going to some locals and uh, hopefully um, well I know they enjoyed the look they he just thought that bear was beautiful and you know it's a good representation it's not a super high dollar bear but it's a good representation and it's and I think uh, I'm pretty proud of it so anyway thanks everyone for sticking around uh, hanging out hopefully everyone uh, was able to watch that that thing with Bill uh, with the mountains uh, that was just so fun to do and hopefully Bill you enjoyed it and please everyone don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that notification bell <laughs>